Okay, I think we will start now. Hello, yes. uh, this is the first uh, webinar in a small series. Um, we call it the Rise of Live Cell Shipments. And uh, I'm very happy that already so many uh, people are joining us in our discussion. My name is Katrin Adelkofer. I'm from Germany. I'm the founder of Cellbox Solution. Uh, you will hear about that in a moment. And I have my first guest and uh, discussion partner is uh, Arthur Godena. He is marketing manager from Panasonic Healthcare Europe. And I'm very happy that uh, you do that with me today because uh, we both are not professional webinar giver. So we are, uh, we, but we have uh, something in common because uh, Panasonic Healthcare is also uh, very much involved in lifestyle shipment as uh, we are as well. We will talk about that. And uh, we, uh, we believe even if we are in such a Corona crisis, uh, we would like to talk about what we really like. And that's why uh, uh, we use this tool, even if we are not professionals. So please excuse us if we are uh, uh, make, making mistakes uh, sometimes. And if uh, Arthur and me, we start to discuss things and forgetting you, of course, we always try to stay focused and go through the seminar. Um, I uh, uh, just want to announce that you are able to ask questions uh, if you want. You should uh, just write them down. I think you have a, a possibility to write it down. We will try to answer all the questions uh, during the seminar. And if not, then uh, uh, we will send you emails or try to get in touch with you. Okay? So, um, uh, one quick word about me. I'm a molecular biologist by training. I uh, uh, studied at the university in Zurich and at the ETH in Zurich. Uh, spent uh, a long time with cells, and that's why uh, I'm very excited about uh, this field we are working in. Um, and then I actually went into industry, worked for a couple of companies, and now I founded uh, I think uh, nine, uh, when was it 2000 and uh, I'm not sure, it was like three years ago, more than three years ago, we found a Cellbox solution. And uh, I'm very happy that uh, we have a Panasonic Healthcare Europe as our partner um, in uh, bringing the Cellbox alive and bringing it to the market. Before we go, and uh, I'm uh, um, asking Arthur a lot of questions, I would like to give you a little background information of uh, what we are uh, and what we want to talk about. Um, in the, you know, when you when you look at the slides, I think everybody of you can can see them. I try to change the to the second. Wait a second. This is the next slide. It's not Before working. We, uh, Catherine, a, a tiny small introduction about myself. Um, ah. uh, <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. Let's let, let's start with that one, Catherine. Um, I highly appreciate the opportunity given by you, and I, I, I really look forward to the rest of the series also uh, of, of the webinars you're organizing. I've, I've heard some topics coming up. Sounds very interesting. Uh, today, uh, we're going to share a bit of perspective about, uh, well, Cellbox, of course, live cell shipping, um, about PHC Group, why we work together, what we see in the market. Um, Tiny bit about myself also, uh, Arthur Gaudra, um, a chemist by education, um, um, but after my, my, my chemistry studies, uh, I immediately left it and I went into life sciences. So uh, by experience, uh, a very commercial life science uh, uh, professional. Um, I've worked in sales, I've worked in export, I've worked in product management, business development, marketing, pretty much all the the different aspects of, of uh, well, a commercial company in life sciences. Currently, indeed, the marketing manager and business development manager uh, for, for PHC Europe, uh, looking for opportunities to offer the best solutions to our, our customer base. And Cellbox is one of that. And that is the reason why we're sitting here today. Thank you, Arthur. So this is how I like it. <laughs> so uh, uh, going back, giving you a little introduction about live cell shipments and uh, why we are actually so keen to to work in that field um you know you know that uh the complexity of cells 
are changing, you know, throughout our research. And, uh, you know, when I started uh, working in academia, we actually had, you know, like almost simple cells uh, and working with stem cells already was something very special, working with feeder layers. But now the cells are getting more and more complex. And when they are, you know, like, for example, differentiated, it is very hard to freeze them down and thaw them again. And uh, looking even more in the direction of 3D cell culture, organoids, or, uh, you know, like, like structures which are consisting of different cell types, um, it is really very hard to freeze them and thaw them and keep them under this uh, physiological condition. So therefore, um, it is actually ne necessary to think about of uh, how does the future, how do you want to work with each other if you, if you cannot send cells from place to place? Um, so in the next slide, um, which I, 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 cannot, I cannot change here, um, but maybe someone can help me. Um, it's uh, not working. So yeah, <laughs> good. can you do that? Okay. Oh, no, now it's over. Uh, the next slide is actually um, not this one. It's uh, showing how fragile cells are actually, uh, uh, you know, look like. If you look at in research, they work with organoids um, in 3D printed tissue. Um, they work with a coded and scaffold hydrogel uh, uh, cells, which are, uh, you know, which are sitting there uh, very fragile. One, for example, which uh, we are currently also very much involved is, is the organ on a chip. So these organ on a chip in the moment almost can't be transported from A to B. Um, the different cell times which are fulfilling uh, a lot of um, uh, uh, important rules within the drug discovery are very hard to transport anymore. And uh, if we look at the medical treatment, um, stem cell therapy, for example, CAR therapy, as well as uh, also, you know, organoid therapy and transplants are, you know, like difficult and the logistic is, uh, is, is, is not easy. Um, and of course, the whole globalization, um, you know, it is not the people, you know, the companies and research institutions are working only uh, separate, they are all connected. So uh, it needs to be, uh, the, there needs to be a way that you can transport your fragile cells and these uh, high potent cells actually through the whole world. And that's why uh, it is now necessary to find the solution of how can you transport these kind of cells safe and sound to the place where they should belong. Um, if you look at the complexity of cell logistic is, um, of course, in diagnostic and, for example, in blood and plasma, that you have a mass market because they can be transported easily. In the, um, in the, in, in other, it's, uh, in other fields, for example, in organ on a chip, there's almost no solution of how can you transport them without losing their quantity and quality. Uh, therefore, the, the market size can't grow. So we have to find solution of how we can bring them into the, uh, in the mass market. Um, on the, uh, here you can actually see if, if we find solution in live cell shipment, so bringing the cells alive in a most ambient situation or best ambient situation um, to the customer or to the cooperation partner, we can actually grow the market size and uh, connect, uh, uh, connect people, researchers and companies uh, with these new innovative technologies. And uh, we are actually quite happy um, if we rethink uh, uh, of freezing down cells and think of how can we transport the cells alive. And I'm very happy uh, that uh, Arthur, representing Panasonic Healthcare, that they took the chance. And uh, when we developed the Cellworks together with the Fraunhofer Institute, um, we were looking for partners who are able, who, who know the, who knows the field very well, 
um, but also uh, uh, looking in the same direction than we do. And uh, I'm very happy, Arthur, uh, that you are here with me. It's always a pleasure working with you. And uh, I would like maybe that you uh, first, you know, tell me a little bit about your company, but then also uh, for me, it is very interesting to find your art that you tell. So why does Panasonic Healthcare uh, decided that they are going into the field of live cell shipment? Of course. Um, I'm very happy to be here also. I said it already. Um, um, one small thing I have to, uh, because otherwise uh, corporate will not be happy. Uh, we used to be Panasonic Healthcare. Officially, we're PHC now. Uh, that is that is uh, the, the, the letters the company uh, uses nowadays. We were sold off by Panasonic. Right. So Panasonic <laughs> minority shareholder at the moment uh, it's not important but i have to mention it i'm sorry for that um the, the question yeah a, a bit about our company i'll do that first just to create a tiny bit of context uh, and that gives a bit of context also on why we we of course uh, chose to work with uh, cellbox with you guys um PHC is is well, it's a rather large company actually. Um, if you look at the whole of PHC, just the bigger picture first, you have PHC Group, and under that group there are four companies. Uh, you have PHC Corporation, of which PHC Europe is a, is a part. I will I will explain a tiny bit later. Um, the second company under the PHC Group is Ascensia Diabetes Care. It's not a a very famous name at the moment. Um, maybe all of you guys heard of Biodiabetes Care. Uh, that is, of course, a much, much fam more famous name than, than uh, Ascensia at the moment. But uh, we bought the diabetes business from Biodiabetes Care, integrated it, and renamed the whole business into Ascensia. Uh, fourth company currently is Apredia. That is pathology business. Uh, we bought that from Thermo Scientific. And the last company below it is LSI Medians. That is a uh, diagnostic services company with a, uh, well, a lot of laboratories also uh, offering diagnos diagnostic testing uh, in Japan on the Japanese market. So that are, are the companies which comprises the whole organization. One of those is PHC Corporation, of which uh, the company I work for, your PHC Europe, is a part of. PHC Corporation, a few companies, just very briefly. Uh, we have uh, in vitro diagnostics medical devices, it's auto injectors, it's point of care uh, analytical uh, equipment, um, and also uh, the hardware for blood glucose monitoring of Ascensia. We have Medicom, so we also are in healthcare IT, it's patient record systems, uh, market leader in Japan, expanding the business into Indonesia, so focused on Asia. And now I come to the main company, which is uh, a PHC, the life science part of the business. Uh, that part of the business uh, of PHC Corporation focuses on laboratory equipment. Um, we have offices all over the world. Uh, we have offices in Japan, Singapore, Europe, uh, US. Uh, we're speaking here uh, on behalf of the European company because that is the company I work for. And uh, us as a life science laboratory equipment supplier, we sell uh, a few product groups where we're very big, big in. Uh, we have quite, quite well, a large market share. We're market world market leader in some, some cases. And those are very much related also to uh, what Cellbox brings to the market. The, the, the product groups are preservation, of course. Preservation is very, very important in the logistics chain. You have to store your samples at a certain point. Uh, we sell minus 150, minus 80 freezers, pharmaceutical refrigerators, minus 40, you name it, the whole line we have there. So we have quite a close link there also with uh, the logistical part of life sciences. The second very important one is incubation, cell culture. Uh, we supply a very broad range of, of top quality CO2 incubators, multi-gas incubators. Um, and other incubation equipment also. And that is, of course, where the closest link with Cellbox is, because we are, with all the biotech, pharma, uh, university medical centers, we are there. And, and what we see there, of course, is they, they have this challenge with shipping uh, their, their, their cells from A to B. But we'll dive into that later, uh, very briefly. Sterilization uh, and pharmacy automation equipment we sell also. Um, and then back, that was the company, back to the question, why do we work with Cellbox? Um, as you know, we, we met you guys at a conference in, in, in London. Uh, we saw uh, the Cellbox there, at least some sales colleagues of mine uh, of the UK sales team uh, saw the 
uh, they were immediately interested this how simple it was they saw it was something unique it was quality it looked good um, and they uh, passed it on onto my plate and I looked at it I thought that's very interesting we're big in cell culture in in, in, in cell storage in logistics but what we were lacking as a company is something actually to, to transport the cells from A to B. We have, well, maybe a vapor shipper where you, where you ship them frozen, but not a solution which the cell box could offer. And then we started investigating and we actually saw it was a, a unique solution. And that is, of course, what we're always looking for as, as PHC. We try to offer unique products in our own portfolio, but if we uh, look for collaborations and other products, we want to offer something unique to the market. Not something me too, not something uh, which everybody has already because that is not who we are. And that's clearly not what Cellbox was either. So that was one of the main reasons with the background of the company, with, with our presence in the market and the combination between our two companies, it was, yeah, it was, was a relatively easy choice, I have to say, very much so. No, also we are actually also quite happy to, uh, to work with you, Arthur and your teams. Uh, you have a very strong uh you know like teams in in all the different countries which i uh, really like working with them but uh, uh can you maybe give us a you know a short introduction so what do you think uh you know we we talked about a lot the advantage of uh, lifestyle shipment you know because looking at the uh, the past and looking in the future so can you give us a small uh insight of your view oh of course. Um, what we see in our day-to-day our, our -day engagements and discussions we have with the market and users when we're at conferences, we see presentations. Um, in, in, in principle, in my opinion, it comes down to, 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 to one basic demand or question, and, and that is, in what environment do you want to have yourselves? And if you if you look at laboratories r d centers uh, where cell culture is taking place the answer is is very simple you want the best in vitro environment which mimics closely the the in vivo environment that is what you want it, and and what how do you do that in the laboratory you use co 2 incubators you use all the other equipment you have in your your laboratory um and that is the most ideal environment for yourselves and what you then engage in if you talk with customers, um, it is, is that there is actually an issue or not that environment the moment you want to start shipping your cells. There are, of course, gold standards today for, for shipping your cells. It's, it's, it's freezing your cells uh, at, at cryogenic temperatures and shipping them from A to B. Um, uh, you might have a heated box, but a heated box, is that the ideal uh, environment for your cells? Is, is then the question, and of course not. It is not what your cells deserve because a lot of work goes into, into creating a cell line, in creating organoids or 3D structures or anything else or level of chips, and then you transport them in a sub-optimum environment. And that is exactly what you see. And the challenges people face, of course, in their shipment is if you put your cells in a sub-optimum environment, it most of the times also mean you will have to put additives to your cell culture, such as cryopreservants or other gels to fixate your cells. And what happens then is you add uh, substances to your cell culture, which you would have never done if you would have been in the laboratory. So trying to prevent that, in cell shipment is absolutely fantastic if that is possible. You don't need to add uh, chemicals to your to your cell culture. You don't need to wash everything anymore when when you take your cells uh, at the moment of arrival. You don't need to see them again. You don't need to culture them again. This whole thing means it will save not only uh, a, a lot of danger for your cells. It will also save you a lot of time and money, and it, it makes the process steps in your cell culture protocol so much more easy. Outside of that, if you freeze your cells, you will probably lose around 20-30% of your cells due to just cryopreservation. If you take them out, you fill them, quite a large portion of them have died, and that is, that is a waste. It's too valuable to me to actually waste your cells like that. Outside of that, if you put all those additives to your cell culture, you will have osmotic stresses. 
if you freeze them, you will have mechanic stresses to your cells. And that is, that is what you do not want. That's how simple it is. Outside the fact that if you put your cells in suboptimum conditions, what will happen is that you have a good chance of, of undesired uh, cell differentiation. You are not 100% sure that your cells are the same. You put them in uh, the, 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 the protocol for transport. At the moment of arrival, you start using them again. Will your outcome be the same the moment you run through that logistics process? And that is something which will, which will ruin experiments. So why choose for suboptimum sub -optimum, uh, conditions? And it is, the last thing I want to say about this one, it is also about, about total cost of ownership. Just think of the process steps you have to take, the additives you have to add, of uh, the laboratory steps you have to take in washing, seeding, cell culture, again, the laboratory time, and, and the time you have your, 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 your engineers working on your cell line again. You can just skip all of that if you just keep incubating yourselves whilst transporting. So those are the challenges and in part also the solutions in my opinion. Yeah, no, thank you. I, I think, uh, you know, uh, looking at, you know, the markets, uh, you can see, you know, when you, when, you, when you send cells, they have to regrow them. Sometimes they are not, all, you know, a lot of them are dying and it takes a long time. So it's a time consuming event, freezing and thawing and, uh, uh, and, and, and you can actually avoid that if you have a solution to ship cells alive. That's uh, absolutely true. So do you think that there will be a change in the market? You know, if, because so far, live cell shipment under a physiological condition wasn't possible. You know, okay, you, you mentioned 37 degrees, uh, uh, which is at least something. But now, if you just send an incubator, you keep the cells happy ever after in, in, in the environment. Do you think that there will be a change also the way people work and how the market will evolve? I sure hope so. Um, first, first, if you if you look at the market itself, of course, if you just look at the entire life science market, it is it is transforming for a while for a long time already. It is nothing new what I'm going to say, but uh, it transformed for from 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 chemical compounds, the traditional uh, pharmaceutical uh, market which we were active in. It changed to biologics, but it will it will the next the next uh, evolution of the market, of course, is in uh, cells being the therapy. We're moving into regenerative medicine, cellular therapy, gene therapy. That is the future of medicine. Everybody knows that. Who's active in our market? And having said that, the world is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. We see globalization. That is also in such an old term. Everybody used it. We see it in our in our market also. It is how simple it is. The, the the university medical centers, they all collaborate globally. What do they want to exchange? Of course, first and utmost, they want to exchange knowledge. That is what they they exchange between each other. But wouldn't it be fantastic? And they do already. They also want to exchange products. They want to exchange cells. And the more complex their cultures are, the more challenges you have in trying to get them from A to B. There are many types of cell lines and many types of cultures, such as 3D, organoids, you name them, you simply cannot freeze them. So there is a very big challenge because of the globalization. A lot of big pharma companies, they're buying small biotechs and, 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 and other startups all over the place because they have to fill their pipeline. That is what they're doing because to, to ensure the future of their business. That means that laboratories are getting scattered all over the place also. They also need to change the, the, the products which they have, the research which they have, the cells they need to exchange between laboratories to make it much more efficient and 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 speed up development that is that is what you see but they do face all of them the same challenge in live cell shipment and that is where cellbox and of course us as phc europe can provide solutions of course um yeah and what what i what i said also is that well, at least what i wanted to say let's put it that way um and i mentioned it earlier already there's there's so many types of of developments in the market where traditional uh, cold chain logistics or other types of, of, of uh, biological uh, sample logistics simply will not work. You can uh, 
think of laboratory chips you mentioned them already microfluidic systems if you freeze them up they will you will ruin your microfluidic system uh, high, through, high throughput screening uh, tests it is they're fragile it's difficult to send them from from one place to the other for tissue engineering gene engineering all of those things the question is is what is the most optimum environment to keep your samples in and how can we not only do that in the laboratory but how can we also do that if we want to get that from one laboratory to the other from a laboratory to a patient from a clinic to the patient the question is for instance for lab on a chip many cases nowadays either you ship them under suboptimum conditions such as just a temperature control box or what you can do is you bring the sample to the to the laboratory to the lab on a chip but you 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 made your laboratory on a chip you have it very small there is a big opportunity there to ship them to the patient to get them to outpatient clinics so it is much more much more convenient for patients to to bring their sample you can preserve the sample you can immediately use the sample which will of course at least i'm convinced of it uh, improve the outcomes of such testing also because if you ship a sample you will face the same type of, of uh, preserving your sample for shipment instead of keeping them under optimum conditions again. So will it change? Yeah, I, I sure believe that that the developments and solutions in the market available will change and open up opportunities for, for many end users in the market, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, the thing is, I, 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 I mean, we see that, you know, that the, the market will change for example you know the organ on a chip companies they currently are you know they have to do all the experiments in-house so if they now have the capability of sending out organ on a chip you know like the chips to the customer where they can do their own uh, uh, experiments that actually would be a completely new market for them same for ready to be screened uh, cell plates for for high content screening um, all these things are now uh, possible, which were not possible before. So I think the market and the way people work, also if you look at the intercompany work, you know, of Big Pharma, you know, currently they work, they, they believe that they're working on the same cell line, but actually it would be much better if they would, you know, send them back and forth to really keep uh, the original cells and make the research they do comparable. So I think uh, there will be, uh, you know, a big jump, even if it's just a technology, but uh, uh, and just a logistic um, technology. But I think we will help, uh, you know, uh, helping the drug discovery as well as cell therapy market uh, to advance. You know, and uh, but then of course, you know, we are we are always talking about oh, it's absolutely fantastic, but of course there are a lot of challenges, you know, which which have to be solved. And uh, can you can you uh, actually uh, talk about a little bit of what you think will be the, the challenges in live cell shipment? That's the outside, of course, which I discussed briefly a bit more. <clears throat> sorry, a bit more about the practical side of of getting your cells from A to B, because I I mentioned already uh, you want to get your cells uh, anywhere on a global scale. Uh, cell box, uh, of course, as you know, I don't have to tell you, but I'm telling for our audience now, they have two different models. Uh, they have the cell box ground and the cell box flight. Um, the big difference is, is that in the cell box ground, you have a pressurized CO2 cylinder. In the cell box flight, you have uh, dry ice pellets which sublimate and keep the CO2 level in your cell box at the desired, desired uh, 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 setting, of course. Um, one of the challenges is you want to get your cells from A to B as soon as possible. And of course, the fact that there is a cell box flight means you can put it on an airplane and you can fly it from Europe to the US and from the US to Japan. It doesn't matter. If you look at the cell box flight, it can maintain without any further help <clears throat> the CO2 and temperature levels for up to 24 hours. And if you completely prep your cell box in the laboratory and you want to ship it from, from to, to America and you just prep it just before it's picked up, there is sufficient time actually to, to, to get it to the other side of the world. And that is the beauty of the cell box, in my opinion. You can actually get it to the place you want. Um, a bit more about that also is in case you never know what happens on the way 
you want to you, you're shipping your cell box from europe to the us uh, the, the forwarder picks it up um it is also possible to just plug it into a socket to recharge the batteries to refill the co2 and there are specialty handlers who can actually do this for you and that is something to keep in mind it is of course not only the platform which you want to have it's not only the cell box which you need you need a proper forwarder who can handle specialty goods also and there are there are out there we of course you guys have contacts with with specialty forwarders we we have uh, contacts there also we can advise of course end users in who to contact but it is between the end user and the specialty forwarder to say exactly what you want and what you need but refilling dry ice plugging it in on the airport to make sure it will survive a 12-hour flight to japan which i make uh, well without without corona Quite regularly, I flew to Japan. It is a long flight, but just to be sure it is completely charged, they can do that for you. So a challenge is, of course, to have the right platform. Another challenge is, is to have the right logistics partner. It's, of course, very important. If you just call the, your neighbor and ask if he can bring it uh, to Paris for you, uh, there is a good chance he will mistreat the cell box and yourselves. <laughs> and that is not what you want, I think. So do keep that in mind to choose the right forwarder. Um, and I said, you want the best environment. You want a controlled CO2 environment. You want a controlled temperature environment because that is the best for yourselves. Um, just a heated box or, or with heating elements or even a controlled one, only temperature is not enough. Um, you can maybe, maybe there's even solutions out there on the market which control temperature and you put a bit of pre-mixed gas in, in the box itself. But is it controlled? Are you sure what the levels are? In, in 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 a long long transport from a to b no you don't and why would you risk a a a, a sample or a platform which is probably worth uh, thousands of euros in development and and uh, in 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 cost why would you why would you take the risk i seriously do not understand so another thing in transport is what you want to prevent is uh, shaking foaming that type of thing of course, in transport, anything shakes, but what you can do is if, for instance, if you have a 96 well plate, uh, you can completely fill it to the rim. You put a piece of, of CO2 permeable plastic on top of it, and that prevents foaming and, 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 and well, shaking of the media itself. Um, and that is what you guys, you know, uh, and us together are working very hard at to provide off-the-shelf solutions in regard to disposables also. Um, we, as Cellbox, as PHC Europe, we uh, want to offer customers complete solutions. We don't only want to offer a box, uh, and we don't only want to offer a freezer. We offer complete solutions from validation, calibration, service, uh, and end the packaging materials because if you ship yourselves from from one place to the other you have to comply with regulations of course also the main regulation is the un 3373 and we can ship all uh, goods described in category b uh, you can look it up on the internet uh, naming them all now would be a bit too much for for this webinar i think but it does require uh, if you ship biological samples uh, four layers of packaging uh, and that, well, with the cell box combined, it is uh, either multi well or T flask. Uh, you have need absorbent paper, Tyvek bag, and the fourth layer is the cell box itself. So that actually helps in keeping the environment, but also complying with the packaging regulations. Um, but where we're going to, want to go together uh, is within, well, maximum a few months. Uh, we're discussing currently have off-the-shelf solutions. So if a customer says, I have this cell line, I have this uh, culture vessel, whichever it is, we can immediately say, you need this package, you will get the disposables, you will get the stickering for your cell box, you will get everything you need. The only thing you need to do is contact the forwarder and, and prep your cells and send them from one place to the other. So uh, th that is that is more the practical side of things in, in regard to the challenges which customer face. But um, we can help and we can offer those solutions and, and overcome those challenges. It's, it's without any issue, in my opinion. I think it's, uh, uh, you know, the, the whole disposable, so where to transport the cells is actually, uh, you know, a big thing. You know, and I know from, from the past that having the, 
the, the, the dishes or the flask or, you know, multi-well plates that you really have to have certain plates. Uh, uh, and of course, we will try or we need to try to solve the problem so that the cells are living in the best environment they can. And uh, uh, my understanding is the uh, same for us, that we are actually working on uh, uh, disposable so that they fulfill all the requirements they, we need. Uh, and uh, also at the same time uh, that we look at how can we help the customer, so the one who, who wants to transport uh, with uh, innovative uh, disposables for, for live cell shipment. Do, we, do, do you want to talk about of how do you want to do that in the future with Panasonic? Uh, in regard well, to disposables. Europe, excuse me, PHC Europe. <laughs> so it's you. <laughs> nah, let's be said. About the disposables, yeah, what I said is we're working towards an off-the-shelf solution. Uh, we as PHC Europe, uh, well, we are a Japanese organization, of course. I think I didn't even mention that uh, in the beginning. Um, uh, we, of course, uh, outside the fact that we look for opportunities on the European market, uh, well, globally for that matter, but we have a very strong presence in Japan. That's where I wanted to go. Um, we uh, entered a collaboration with a Japanese, uh, well, packaging solutions uh, company, which only has presence in Japan. And I'm sure that um, pretty much nobody in the world heard about them yet. Uh, but what they provide is really unique solutions because I earlier mentioned you can fill up your plate and just put a plastic sheet over it. But what we will come with is silicone sheets which will fit exactly in the wells and that will save you about 40% uh, of the media you need to fill up a well. So that's, a, that's your, an investment. It will completely seal off. It's your CO2 permeable, but it will save you a considerable amount of medium uh, to, 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 to fill up your, your for instance, 96 well plate. So it's cost saving in the end again. It makes it safer, <clears throat> it prevents shaking and foaming, and it saves you a lot of media, which means it will save you a lot of cost. But um, we are discussing it right now, uh, Cellbox and us, um, and those are the types of solutions uh, we will come with. And uh, just to complete package, it of course, you will, you will need that packaging material, but we try to make it, again, the best solution which we can possibly supply to the market. And that is why we are looking globally for uh, products which will comprise of that best solution to the market. But more information on, on, on that in, in due time, as soon as possible. We're working hard. Yeah, you know, the, there's one thing which I would like to mention. Uh, is the data logging, you know? So I think, uh, you know, like when, when when you look at transporting cells, especially if they are alive, you really want to know what's uh, what's going on with the cells while they are shipped. And uh, uh, so within the cell box, there is a, a data logging for temperature and for CO2. But do you think there need to be more logging than only these two, just as a question? Like, for example, shaking or, you know, like uh, GPS, I think we also have included GPS if wished. Um, all these things can be also kind of provided by uh, the logistic partner. I don't know. Do you think there needs to be more? No, to be honest, not. No, the most the most important ones you mentioned already. I think temperature CO2 are by far the most important uh, in that regard. Other than that. Uh, it's not really relevant in regard to those to what happens here. But relative humidity is not interesting because you fit it up with media anyway. They will not dry. It's no problem. Yeah. I think uh, uh, shaking vibrations, uh, whether or not the cell box has been tilted, uh, that is very simple. You see that you see that even if you ship uh, a, a simple box, your car cardboard box from one place to the other, you have a simple sticker. You can see, see if it if it tilted or not. But logging those, yeah, it, it will be interesting, yes. And But that more has to do whether or not your forwarder has properly handled your 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 precious cells and your cell box. Um, yeah. so logging those, yes. Uh, but I think forwarders can provide logging data for that. And I know that Cellbox is working on uh, GPS tracking. So you can uh, completely follow your box from A to B and know exactly where your cells are. And if you combine that all, I think you have more than enough data, to be honest. Yeah, no, I think so. You know, I just learned 
uh, you want to know exactly what, for example, FDA wants to know, but not anything more. You know, you have to, you would just want to, you need the answers of the question, but you don't want to have too much information uh, because sometimes you can't interpret them. So uh, we, we, we do our very best uh, to, to, uh, to lock what is really important for the researchers yeah. uh, 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 to do. Um, one, one last question to you yeah. is like, so what will be the future, uh, Arthur? Do, so do, do you, do you want to expand the business of lifestyle shipment or, you know, as you said, you're looking in the whole world about new technologies regarding lifestyle shipment? Of course, we want to expand in lifestyle shipment, but our first and, and foremost priority at the moment now is to establish uh, the cell box and come with off-the-shelf solutions. Um, we do want to expand in, in uh, life science logistics in general. For, for life cell shipment, you need the best platform. For, for pharmaceutical temperature controlled shipment, you need the best platform. We are always on the lookout for new opportunities. Uh, do we want to grow? Yeah, that's, of course. We, we're a commercial company and that is, that is my job to try to, 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 to grow the business. But just growing the business is nonsense. We have to do it sustainably. We have to do it responsibly, and we have to do it do it uh, with with the customer in mind. Just uh, hunting for a profit is nonsense because that will yield a bit of result uh, in in one year, but after that you will you will diminish. It's nonsense. Do we want yeah. to grow? Of course, but we do want to grow responsibly with our partners because our partners are very important for us, and 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 Cellbox, of course, is one of those. Um, but yeah, we do want to grow, and we are on the lookout for new opportunities. So, if if anyone listening uh, has has ideas, uh, plans, suggestions, feel free to contact. More than welcome. No, I'm uh, uh, I'm very happy actually that uh, that you are focusing on this logistic uh, part because we really believe that this is a essential part within drug discovery within uh, cell therapy. Uh, which has to be solved and i think innovation is there very important as well um uh, we know that uh, uh you know the the logistic of live cells is uh challenging you know we know that there will be uh, a lot of things have to be overcome so that everybody in the world don't have to freeze cells anymore and just can send them happy alive in the best uh, environment as they can good, good. Um, yeah. And I, I'm really, you know, Arthur, I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very happy that you are at that place where you are. Otherwise, I would ask you to, to work with me at Sailbox because you're doing a great job. But it's Thanks. perfect that you are at PHC Europe. Um, I, uh, uh, I, I, I actually really want to thank you. Uh, I want to thank uh, Panasonic Europe working with us because, uh, first of all, we learn a lot from the from 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 you know people like you from your team and we are really looking forward uh in the future i think we can do a lot uh, uh in regard of lifestyle shipments um we know that it is it is a challenging market it is also technology which has which will grow and uh the disposables as you mentioned them i think they're very important and because of you know the passenger as we call them the cells um, you know, they are uh, different shapes, they need different environment. And uh, uh, in the next uh, um, webinar, which will be, I think, on the 19th of August, uh, we will have another uh, seminar or webinar. Uh, okay. And the topic will be the challenges of building and transporting organoids. And this is what we just discussed, Arthur, uh, that this is really a challenge. You can't just freeze them, thaw them, and then use them. So ideally, you have uh, the answer of how to transport them and also in, in which disposable. And here, I actually i am very happy uh, to announce that I got Patrick Kugelmeier from Switzerland uh, to talk to me and uh, uh, give a little presentation about his work. And then we discuss of how we can solve this problem, um, transporting organoids alive. Um, uh, something which I'm really looking forward. Um, this will be, I think, same time at around four o'clock, um, again on the 19th. And uh, uh, if 
anybody has any question um, regarding this webinar, we are very happy, Arthur and myself, um, to, uh, to, to answer the question. Um, send us an email or just contact us. And I'm uh, Arthur, uh, to, to finish that, it is really a pleasure working with you uh, also in the future, uh, looking forward. And I hope so much that at one point that we can see each other face to face. Um, but at least it was good seeing you, uh, you. and uh, looking forward, uh, and thank you so much for taking your time. And uh, if anybody needs anything, you know, Arthur is the man, he can, he can answer the question on behalf of uh, PHC Europe. Thank you. So, I think we are, uh, uh, it's, it's time uh, to, to, to shut down the webinar. This was Arthur and me, this was our first uh, webinar. I think we did okay so far, and I, I'm looking forward. Uh, uh, we will find other ways of connecting. Thank you, everybody, for watching us, uh, and uh, stay healthy, and I hope we see each other, or at least hear each other, um, on the 19th of August. Tschüss, alles Gute, bye-bye, Arthur, and uh, uh, all the best Thanks. to everybody. Thank you. Now I I, I don't know what I have to do. Clapper. <laughs> Are we still live or not?